Welcome back to Peace, Love and Tarot. This reading is for Libra, Sun, Moon or Rising. And Libra, it's your 2020 yearly overview. Now what we have here, Libra, is we have one card for each month of 2020 from the Rider Waite Tarot deck. And then I have uh, clarified each one of those cards with the beautiful Star Child Tarot deck. Um, just sorry about that noise in the background. That's just the washing machine. It's going to be finished at any moment. Um, yeah, I know that you can't see the full table here, guys. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up each pair as I read them so you'll be able to see them nice and closely. Um, and we'll start here at January and we'll move around clockwise to December. Now, I just wanted to point out, guys, that you have four aces in your reading. Now, you've got all the aces apart from the ace of pentacles. But you have a, ah, no, I lie. You have Ace of Crystals, which is the Ace of Pentacles. So you have every single Ace here. Um, that's a lot of like new beginning, new opportunity energy. You have an extremely powerful first quarter. Um, yeah, lots going on here. So it's going to be a really, really big year. And yeah, lots of potential energy. So let's get started with your January. In January, absolutely Libra kicks off with a massive bang because you have the Empress and the Ace of Swords. So if nothing says, uh, you know, new beginnings stronger than this, I'm not sure what it is. So we're starting a new decade, a new chapter, a whole new 10 year cycle. So at the end of 2019, a lot of the themes coming through in the tarot readings were big completions, lots of transmuting of heavier denser energies lots of death card coming up devil energy and that sort of thing and i'm seeing a, a big shift in these um yearly readings that i'm doing i'm getting a lot of new beginning cards coming through for every sign also some micro um some smaller scale completions as well as we kind of have this first year where we feel ourselves um, feel our way into the new decade so it's lots of setting up and new starts and that kind of thing January Empress and Ace of Swords well you know that is that air sign energy here Libra I feel like you're going to be starting off the new year feeling strongly empowered so, <clears throat> some of you might have you know um, mental breakthroughs extreme clarity vision and ideas for what you want to complete this year um, you know, new business ideas, new creative projects, all of those kinds of things. You also might have the ability to really see truths, see through people, pick out when things aren't authentic. I think you're going to be quite, have quite heightened senses in January. Now you have that Ace of Swords together with the Empress. So if, you know, the Ace of Swords is a new beginning, um, a, a new idea, then the Empress can birth that into the physical, tangible realm for you because she is fertile with the possibility of um, making ideas physical, basically, and physically abundant. So if you've got a project that you want to get up and get going, January is a brilliant time for you to do that. You know, she can represent physical birth as well. If that's something that you are trying to, you know, achieve conception in January, it could be a powerful time for that. So kicking off January with a big bang there, Libra. So let's go to your February big reach. February, we have the Four of Crystals, which is the Four of Pentacles, and the Seven of Cups. So I feel like February could bring a lot of different... Um, opportunities and possibilities for you and you know if that uh, January energy was all that new beginning and Empress energy then yeah lots of things could have come um, into your realm um, if you're looking at dating there might be a lot of suitors that you're surrounded by if it's uh, you're looking for work you might have a lot of options to choose from it's that kind of energy when I was pulling these cards um, what I heard was quality not quantity so you might be presented with a lot of different options but try and use your discernment to figure out which are the ones that you should actually put your time and energy into pursuing and that may not be the options or opportunities that look the shiniest and prettiest on the outside and that goes for you know suitors in a dating situation as well as business opportunities just because somebody is you know very physically beautiful doesn't mean to say that they um, you know are authentic 
and living you know in an aligned life on the inside so just be wary of that um, now we also have that here with the four of crystals which also talks about our value our sense of personal security and quality and it can sort of um, talk about you know holding on tightly to something when we have it so I feel like still keep an open mind to lots of opportunities or to shift between them rather than maybe just choosing one and going okay I'm locked into this now this is it don't hold on too tight but be very discerning of the opportunities that you're choosing from in February okay so March here's our second ace coming in ace of wands with the four of wands so yeah I mean that four of wands can be about finding greater stability in your life um, a sense of security it does talk about um, celebrations marriage weddings uh, relationships all that kind of thing actually you can see the writer version of that card here right and you know we have that with the ace of wands so this says to me there could be a new opportunity coming in to build something stable with somebody. Now, if you think that's in a business sense for you, then maybe you will be, you know, building an idea or, or a business that can, um, you know, be abundant long term. It's going to give you security and stability and grow and expand. If you are, you know, single, it could be, you know, a passionate offer that has the ability to actually go long distance and end up in engagement or marriage or even just, you know, setting up a happy home together. If you're already in a relationship, it could indicate that it's going to another level. So an engagement, a deeper commitment or that kind of thing. It can also be this Ace of Wands about you, you know, getting a lot of passion and enthusiasm back for life, some kind of deeper spiritual awakening or message coming through. So it's really beautiful energy here for you in March. Now the, the message with the Aces is that being, you know, number one in each suit of the tarot deck, in this case the Wands, they are seeds of potential. But of course we need to take inspired action ones is a suit of action in order to expand them and to grow them right so we can't just leave them and hopefully that they'll you know manifest or um that they'll grow by themselves we need to nurture them take action put the energy and effort in and that's when you know we grow that into an abundant love or business whatever it may be for you okay so april we have the magician and the five of crystals. Yes, I feel like it's almost like you were handed a wand there in March. And then in April, you really learn how to use it. I think in, in April, you really wake up to a sense of your deeper power to be the creator of your own reality and the co-creator with the universe. So, yeah, I mean, there's a saying in the, with the magician card, you know, as above so below so it can be a really good month to look at your your mindset your beliefs um you know what kind of thoughts and feelings are you projecting out into the external realm because our external reality is a match of our internal reality so it's a great time to really you know work on your mental game feel good feel abundant and then that's what you're, to, what you're going to attract into your life because that five of crystals which is the five of pentacles can link to a feeling of lack a feeling of victim mentality um, a feeling of isolation or withdrawal but it's what it says is that that state of mind can hold us back from seeing the big picture from having perspective right so the you know the the key to overcoming that kind of mindset is to see the bigger person picture be the creator of your own reality that's the message there so yeah i mean the five of crystals can also um indicate some kind of lack of financial abundance or material abundance because you're too sort of caught up in that kind of mindset but really we want the the key to overcoming it is to shift into that magician energy and realize that only you can create your own reality only you can create your own abundance through using your will and intention 
And you have all the tools that you need in order to do this. And when you wake up to that reality, that's when you unlock your infinite potential and you really learn how to use this wand to start creating your best life and what you really, you know, what you really desire. So that's beautiful energy there. Okay, May, another ace, just for a change, guys. And the Knight of Crystals. So definitely another energy shift here. We have that beautiful Ace of Cups and the Knight of Crystals. So, you know what this says to me is after the combination there in April of that Magician energy, it's like once you kind of start working on that your inner game, on that alignment through the Magician energy, um, getting out of that any feelings of lack or, you know, scarcity mindset, that kind of thing, that's when you open yourself up to receive. And that's what the Ace of Cups is about. It's about being in a position where you can give and receive love you're open to offers of love and you're really you know open to the opportunities that are going to deeply fulfill you um, the ace of cups also talks about transformation these are lotus flowers on this pond and if you know about the lotus it starts its journey from the mud at the bottom of the pond up through the water towards the light where it blooms on the surface. So it is a journey of transformation. So you could find yourself in May on some kind of sense of inner um, journey of transformation, even as some kind of spiritual awakening, that kind of thing. And this process is helping you to lay a foundation um, in order to be successful down the track. Because this Knight of Pentacles, that's what he's all about. He's all about doing the either the internal work or you know laying external plans down in order to be abundant in the next season, in the next harvest. So I really think it's a great time for you to be doing some planning in May. Um, and then you know the promise is that you will gain abundance in the future. Right, so let's go to your June. We have the world, huge energy, and the Six of Swords. Yeah, okay, so this is actually really, I think, the only completion energy that you have this year. And it's a powerful one, um, the world. And, you know, but the world is a victory card. So it says that there is something big coming to a completion in June. Um, it could be a karmic contract that's ending, could be a relationship ending, um, and that maybe that's why we see new beginnings in love here around this card. Could be moving on from a job that served its purpose in your life and you're now ready for bigger and better things. Can be walking away from a friendship that is no longer serving you or has gone bad in some way. But either way, it's a card of victory. So it says that you've recognized that it's the right time to move on from a situation and jump through that Saturnian hoop into your next life lesson. And we need to be like this dancer who knows when to flow from completion to beginning. Because when we hold on, that's when we become stuck and stagnant and we can get out of alignment with our life path. So that's the world energy. And interestingly, the world says that what the magician, as card number one in the tarot deck, set out to achieve in the world using his will alone, has now manifested and completed in the physical realm. And it's time for you to move on to new manifestations. And I believe that's why we have the strong new beginning energy and magician energy just before the world card comes in. So it's like you're sort of setting up that new chapter and closing another one out at the same time. So we have that with the Six of Swords, which is about making a necessary rite of passage, moving on from a situation that potentially could have caused us some, some pain, some hurt, uh, maybe some instability in our emotional realm. And it talks about needing to move on in order to move to a greater place of harmony peace within yourself, a place where you can be emotionally calm and stable. And, you know, if possible, we leave the swords, which represent, you know, the thoughts, the overthinking, um, the hurts, that sort of thing. If we can leave them in the past, on the shore, walk into these clouds with no baggage, 
So see here she's got absolutely nothing with her into that new beginning. Kind of a sense of being naked and vulnerable like the Dancer in the World card. We're heading into the new chapter free and um, liberated without baggage. So completion happening for you in June. So let's go to your July. We have the Queen of Pentacles and we have the Knight of Swords. Yeah, okay, so July could bring some swift change in terms of abundance. So yeah, there could actually be financial abundance coming in in July. You know, that Knight of Swords can be fast progress. And the Queen of Pentacles is somebody who's at the top of her suit of abundance. She knows how to create. She knows how to be that magician in terms of the physical realm and create material abundance. And, you know, so I feel like uh, physical abundance or finances could come in for you quickly in July. Um, you know, like I said, that Queen of Pentacles is somebody who can be nurturing and compassionate in the household, but she can also go out and earn the money and all of that. She really has a strongly practical energy. She's mature and she's grounded. She holds that Ace of Pentacles and she's admiring it and nurturing it because she knows that by you know, planting new seeds by nurturing the resources that she does have, then she can grow and expand those into greater wealth. So that's what I see for you in July. Okay, let's go to your August, where we have the Four of Swords and Perspective. Yeah, interesting. So Perspective is the Hanged Man card. This is the Star Child Tarot version of this card. And then we have the Four of Swords. So I feel like there might be a situation in August that calls you to take some time out to withdraw your energy from a situation in order to gain a different viewpoint, to gain some perspective and to see the bigger picture of a situation, right? So also, you know, with that Four of Swords, you might need to physically rest, retreat, um, do some self-reflection or introspection on a situation. This combination is about you taking the time out, really reflecting on a situation in order to formulate a new battle plan, a new direction forward with your life. Um, it could be some time to process any hurts or grief from this completion that you had in uh, June because we have that link to the Three of Swords there. But it talks about taking a momentarily, a momentarily pause, and a momentary, sorry, pause, and that you'll know when that moment is where you can basically jump up, grab that sword, and get back into life with new energy, gusto, and a fresh new idea or battle plan or direction of where you're heading. Now, the um, Hanged Man card, yeah, it talks about waiting to get that moment of enlightenment. So that's what we're also talking about in the Four of Swords. That's, you know, in the Rider version of this card, the hanged man hangs from the tree of knowledge, waiting to be enlightened, waiting to see the bigger picture, to have that perspective shift. It can also talk about dying the death of the hanged man. So this could be what you might be feeling after that world completion. So that could be some feelings of the grief cycle. So going through from, you know, first of all, we, we have a sense of denial, maybe denying that something came to an end. You know, maybe there's that big ending here, but you haven't quite fully let go. Be denial, bartering, um, I think then anger, depression and sadness before we reach a place of acceptance. So I feel like in the month of August, you may need to take some time out to wait till you can see the bigger picture, to become get that sense of enlightenment, to accept a situation as it is, you know. I um, do strongly feel it's, it's linked to that completion though. And you'll know when the time is for you to move forward. And I think you'll get the, gain the insight that you need for that. Um, okay, so September. Yep, we're in September. We have the Ten of Cups and we have the Two of Pentacles. So I feel like the last quarter of the year for you is quite focused on the realm of feelings, emotions and love. We've got obviously the Lovers, the Queen of Cups, the Ten of Cups here and the Four of Wands. So... I feel like after that little completion, 
that you're going to start to feel a lot more emotionally fulfilled. I mean, we have the Ten of Cups here. So I do feel like you're going to be moving back into a happier place where there's a lot more joy and harmony and love around you. But we do have the, um, the juggler here, the Two of Pentacles, which can sometimes mean some indecision coming up around our realm of feelings. We also have the lovers coming up in a couple of months, which can be a huge decision around a matter of the heart. So maybe some of you are choosing um, between something that's deeply emotional for you. It could be making a decision about a relationship, whether to pursue it, whether to give it a, a second chance. Um, yeah, it could be around a work situation that really ties, ties into your sense of passion and purpose, that kind of thing. And some of you might be feeling a little bit unstable in the emotional realm, a little bit of ungroundedness, maybe a few tumultuous emotions here. But, you know, Libra, you are the sign of balance. So it could be that you might need to work on your internal balance in the month of September to kind of become a bit more even keeled. And when you are in that place of balance, that's when you can really experience that Ten of Cups energy. That's when you can, you know, actually be abundant in terms of love and harmony and joy. Okay, so we're going to your October. We have the Two of Wands and the Four of Wands. Yeah, so I mean, we do have this theme of indecision around this later part of the year. Because the Two of Wands is also known as the Life Review card. And it talks about um, kind of contemplating the past and the present and the future and really deciding what path you want to walk. So, you know, the Two of Wands also asks you, are you willing to take a step beyond your comfort zone in order to achieve your dreams. So some of you might need to take some kind of leap, leap of faith or um, start walking a new path. You might need to leave something in the past and you know actually um, yeah, really be focused on the present moment in this month. We have, you know, we're going from twos here and both of these you know both of these cards so these are about you know new beginnings um you know there could be partnership energy here as well i mean this could be choosing between two different people to pursue a relationship with but you're really wanting to make whatever it is whether it's work or love you're wanting to make that decision that's going to end up in this kind of reality in a beautiful you know celebratory energy um, situations that can go the distance and lead to great harmony. I mean, this is the second time in this reading that you've had this card. Um, it also links to the 1111 synchronicity energy. So some of you could have signs or symbols um, or synchronicities that come in in this month and it could be meeting someone or it could be just some kind of situation, event or conversation that has the ability to actually change your life path and have you go on a different track that you didn't expect it. So yeah, interesting energy guys, that's your October. Just gonna check the time on the video. All right, we've still got enough time before it runs out on us. Okay, so November, we have the lovers and we have the seven of crystals, which is the seven of pentacles. So I feel like this was all the rumbling leading up to a really big decision in November. So the lovers before it was just a, you know, a lot of people just see it now as a love card. But traditionally in tarot, it was the card of um, huge decisions. The decisions that are linked to, you know, heartfelt matters. So, and interestingly, with the Seven of Crystals, uh, the Seven of Crystals is about making decisions on when to invest our time and energy in order to um, reap rewards, you know, to reap a harvest down the track. And it can also be about um, looking at where you've been putting your energy currently and looking at the value or return you've been getting from that. Because we have it with the lovers, which is, you know, around matters of the heart, uh, it could be in a workplace situation about deciding to pursue, you know, something that you're deeply passionate about that aligns with you now. Um, in terms of a relationship, you might be considering who or what situation 
to invest in now that's going to go the distance that's going to give you the rewards or that you can build the empire with that you truly want so I really feel like you are um, calling in a sense of uh, quality rather than quantity wanting to know that if you're going to put your energy your blood sweat and tears and your heart into something that it's going to head in the direction that you truly want it to so I think there's a big decision around matters of the heart for you in November and December we are closing out the year with the ace of pentacles ace of crystals and the queen of cups yeah beautiful so after these, this big decision-making energy that we've seen over the last few months, we see you coming through as the Queen of Cups or evoking the energy of the Queen of Cups. Now, the Queen of Cups for me is somebody who is emotionally intelligent, emotionally secure and stable, unshakable, no matter what's going on in life. She sits on the shoreline with her foot in the emotional waters of life because water, you know, is representing... Um, our emotions in tarot and she's unshakable you know she's on this big stone throne and she has these cliffs around her so nothing is going to ruffle your feathers in December and the Queen of Cups has mastered her sense of emotional processing she holds them in this gilded cup here and she chooses when she wants to let them out when she wants to process them so I feel like you know this has been a journey for you this year of mastering your emotions being coming into a greater place of balance in your life and just being unshakable mature and compassionate and when you're in that place that's when the opportunities come in thick and fast this is your fourth ace in the reading so we're closing out December on the ace of pentacles which can be um, a monetary gain a windfall um, a new financial opportunity a new job it's something, um, a new opportunity in that physical, material, tangible realm. So it can link to home, new home as well. Um, it can be, I guess it can link to relationship in terms of a situation that's going to be stable, that's going to be solid, and it's going to make you feel, you know, like that Queen of Cups, someone who can accept love. Now the Ace of Pentacles also talks about an opportunity that comes in that you know before then you may have had to climb um, a metaphorical mountain walk a path or go through a portal in order to get it so it's a reward that comes after you know a time that might have been slightly difficult maybe after a difficult decision and that's a, the universe's way of saying you know what you've overcome that lesson here's your reward but once again with those aces we need to take that opportunity nurture it like the Queen of Cups does with her cup of emotions in order for it to expand and bring the greatest abundance for us through into 2021. Beautiful reading Libra, you have got some very lucky cards here um, all about you know new beginnings and opportunities is the strongest theme in your reading with all those beautiful aces. We have a strong sense of um, potentially finding love that can go the distance here. And we do have that completion or moving away from something in the middle of the year. But just remember that that completion is the portal or gateway to get to this. So I really wish you a great year, Libra. Um, feel free to leave me a comment if you'd like to share how it's kicked off for you under that Empress and Ace of Swords. It's really powerful. Um, very powerful energy to start your year. Uh, keep in mind it's a general reading, so I'm not saying every Libra's year is going to go like this. Um, yeah, and I'll see you back here for plenty more weekly and monthly readings throughout the year.